Hi, and welcome to this video, which is the first of a series of video where we're going to look at developing in Solidity, really starting from the basics. Um, we're going to look at starting with uh, what is Ethereum, what is Solidity. Then we're going to learn about Remix and the entire ID that is available to us online. Once this is done, we'll just start uh, actually coding our first smart contract together. Now we're going to start very simple and in the next video, we'll increase the complexity. And after that, we'll add some more concepts. We'll look at the data types and then we'll even look at how to start developing this in your own environment. But for now, let's start with the basics. So what is Ethereum? Well, it's an open source software platform where developers can just build their own applications on the Ethereum blockchain. So Ethereum, of course, has its, has its own cryptocurrency that is very famous called Ether. It's the second biggest cryptocurrency. And it was created in July 30th, 2015. Now, I believe if you're here, it's because you know about Ethereum. Um, but the main thing to know is that Ethereum introduced uh, to the logic, to the concept of blockchain that came with Bitcoin, it introduced the smart contracts, which allowed developers to simply build and customize on blockchain whatever application they want. And today we're seeing a lot of these applications come out, such as DeFi NFT, which are, which are likely topics that you've heard about. And Ethereum, of course, is built on the programming language that is called Solidity. So what is Solidity? Well, it's an object-oriented high-level language that is, in fact, a curly bracket language, much like JavaScript, which, in fact, just like C++ in Python, is one of the languages that influenced Solidity when it was being built. This language is, of course, exclusively used to write smart contracts on Ethereum. So now, let's just go take a look at Remix. What is Remix? Well, it's an IDE that is on the browser that allows for developing, deploying, and administering smart contracts for Ethereum or similar blockchains. Now, it can be used also as a learning platform and it's very useful for that purpose. This is why it's what we're gonna be using here. So this is it when you access the homepage and you can see a bunch of different things. First off, you see here the list of different plugins that they have. Now, they obviously have Solidity, they also have a learning pl plugin and they have multiple other learning plugins as well as debugger, as you see here. You also have the option to just create a new file, open existing files, connect to local host, you can import from GitHub and other similar options. Also here, and I recommend you go check it out, is the whole documentation as to how it's built, how the features work. And um, I mean, interesting reads. Now to the left here, you see when you just arrive the first time on Remix, you have a default workspace that is created for you. And it holds already some, some contracts that are here, just as examples for you to look at. There's the code here. These are actual working contracts. And I recommend you go take a look if ever you have the time and interest. They already show really how the language can work. Um, and we can go ahead and create our own. And this is what I did here, my course workspace, which has exactly the same structure. Um, I just, uh, I just uh, also included already a first file, which is the one we're going to be working with. Now to the left here, you see the navigation bar. We have some more options. Um, there's the compiler here that once we select a file, we can just compile it, selecting the, the version of the compiler that we decide to go for. And, uh, and then here we also have uh, the option to once uh, we have compiled our first contract, we can uh, deploy it and actually start using it, testing it. And we're going to do this uh, together. OK, so uh, I think uh, let's just uh, get started on, on some code then. We're going to create our first contract together, a very simple contract that all it's going to do is store data. And therefore, we call the file simple storage, right? Whenever you write a contract in Solidity, the first thing that you need to do is declare what Solidity version you're going to be using. So this is what we're going to do right here. So I type pragma, which is the keyword that is used in order to declare the version Solidity. And here we can, what we're going to do is we're going to include just a, a range of versions that the compiler is going to go for, and it will choose 
whatever comes first with the highest version being 0.9.0. Okay, our version of Solidity is declared and now what we can do is we can create our first contract, which we do doing just this. We actually just give the keyword contract and we give it a name. Whoops, we're gonna call it simple storage curly brackets of course and enter we see that the id nicely added the closing curly bracket okay so the way um these contracts work are similar to uh, handling classes in any uh um, object oriented language that you may have used in the past right so inside of this contract we're actually de going to declare any kind of variable we need to access from outside the contract and we're going to declare any function that we need to also access outside the contract or also within the contract it actually depends on the usage for each of these we're going to create our first variable and in fact the only that we're going to be using we're going to call it uint so uint is a data type that is actually called unsigned integer which of course means many different things in the programming world but so uh, the thing that matters for us here i think is simply that it's an integer that is higher than zero so we're going to call it uint and we call uh, stored data that's it so we just created our variable stored data and its purpose will be to store data then we move on and we create our first function and this function, what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to set a certain data inside of our stored data variable. So we go with function set, and we need to mention that it should take an argument. So we want to pass a certain value when we call the set function. And this value, we want it to be also a uint, obviously, because we want it to match the data type of our variable so uint and we're going to call it x so the value that we will pass is called x and curly brackets enter and this function right here as i said is just going to update the value of stored data to x and this by itself is already a correct and working function there is just one thing that we can do and we're going to add it here there is a keyword in solidity that simply states whether this function can be accessible from outside the contract or not. And this keyword is public. So we're going to add it here. And what this means is that we can call this function from outside the contract. And you'll see as soon as, uh, as we actually go into the testing what this means. And of course, now we have our function to set the value, which is great. But once we have a value there, of course, what we want is to be able to get this value. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create a function called get. Of course, it doesn't require any arguments because the only thing it does is get a value. We want it to be able to access this value from outside the smart contract. So we're going to call it public. And this function should return a value that is a uint because this is the type of our variable curly brackets and the only thing that it does is it return stored data here we go so now there is one more thing that we can do and we're gonna add it here there's a keyword called view and this keyword simply declares the function as a function that will never change the state of the contract yeah so unlike our function set that will change the state of this variable the this function, the get function, will never do that. It is only there for us to view some data. Therefore, we just add this keyword here to make it clear to the contract. So there you have it. This is our very first smart contract. We have, you have coded your very first smart contract. Now, is it very useful? Well, that's up to you to decide. Um, one thing is certain though, is that it does have limitations. Um, first of all, in this case, anyone can set a value. You don't necessarily want that for anyone to be able to set a value just arbitrarily. But there are things that we can do, such as um, limit the set function to whoever actually created the smart contract. We can also uh, limit uh, the access to this smart contract to just certain users based on a 
the balance they have in their wallet. And these are all examples that we will take a look together in, in future videos. Now, once this is done though, what we can do is we can come here to the side and with our file selected, just we have, as we have here, I can just compile the file. It thinks for a second and you see it worked. There is a warning, but nothing bad for us. The smart contract is compiled and we can go onto the next screen here that allows us to deploy the contract. Now, environment by default, we'll choose JavaScript VM. So make sure this is what you have too. You can see here other options we have is of course, different accounts. So this is just for our testing purposes. We can have different addresses with some fake ether on it, which allows us to just connect to the smart contract and, and test it out with these different addresses. And this will be particularly handy when we start testing the functionalities, as I mentioned, such as limiting, setting the variable only to uh, the person that created the smart contract. Okay, so I can just hit deploy. It takes a second. And we can see that be below this, the deployed contracts, we have our contract here. Right here, I didn't mention it earlier, but we actually have a command line, which is very useful when testing actually. So let's take a look. One great thing with um, this IDE remix, and this is the reason, one of the reasons why I want us to, to use this together to start with, is because if you click on this, it's gonna give you these functions actually from here directly we can set and get our value which is of course very useful and easy to get started so we can do it just right now um if i click on get well then it's going to go get our value of stored data now this value is of course empty because we haven't set it yet and it's not quite empty because per default you int is zero right now what we can do though is we can set this value if i set it to five and hit set then we just have confirmation that we went and called this function and now if i click on get again there we have it updated to five very simple you can have some fun with that and another important thing is that you see our variable right now is not available here because it's currently only available in the smart contract. But if I come here and add public and then come here to compile it again and deploy, we can see it's added at the bottom right here. This is our new deployment. Actually, we can delete the previous ones. Open this one up and you see that now our variable stored data is also available in here. And if I click on it, it will show also the default value zero. If I update it here, then clicking on this, shows us the value five. So the public keyword is really the important thing that allows us to use it outside of the smart contract and throughout the entire blockchain. That's it in reality. Um, this is all I wanted to cover for this video. In the next video, we're gonna look at, at a more complex example. We're actually gonna create our very first uh, coin, very simple in its most simplest form, but that's the plan for the next video. Of course, even this example that we looked at right here, it's actually taken from the Solidity documentation, which I highly recommend you go through. We're gonna go through it together and we're gonna start off with their examples before moving on to some more complex stuff. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Pierre from Morales.io. I hope you enjoyed this. See you in the next one.